I always say how tough of a sport Muay Thai is, but you're just so underpaid. Like it's <laughs> it's a travesty how much yeah, you're underpaid, bad. lad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, you know that was that was one of the that was always tough for me when I was coming up because all the a lot, so many of the people I was training alongside of they were all fighting in the UFC. They were fighting in Pride. A, a lot of them were, were doing the MMA thing, and they're always like, "Why don't you come do MMA? Why don't you come do MMA? Like we can get you money. We can get you fight." Especially when I wasn't getting any fights, you know. <laughs> I had a really long long period of time where I just could not get a fight, and they're just like, "Why don't you switch over?" And, and for myself, it was one of those things where. I never wanted to do, to do both. It's like if I'm going to do MMA, I'm going to stop doing Muay Thai and I'm going to give everything that I have to this sport. And I just, I wasn't, I couldn't give up this thing that I love so much. You know, there was a point when I was like, all right, this was going into, uh, I think it was 2009. Uh, you know, at a long period of time, I couldn't get any fights. It's like, all right, I made it my New Year's resolution. I was like, I'm going to give Muay Thai one more year. And if things don't pick up, I'm going to completely switch over to MMA and I'm going to be the best damn MMA fighter I can be, you know. Uh, fortunately, like a week after New Year's, I got a call for, to fight for a title and then everything kind of progressed from there. But that was always the thing that was that was like pulling at me. But all, it was also the thing where I was like, if I give up, if I stop doing this, who's, who's going to help the sport grow you know it was there was very few people really really pushing the envelope when it came to the sport and it's like just because things aren't i'm not getting paid and <laughs> i'm losing money even doing this you know is it's it like i want to leave this sport better than where i found it you know it's, it, if, if i don't do it i'm passing that responsibility off to the next generation now they got to work that much harder because i was like oh i'm gonna go over here where i can make some money um so i, I took it as a kind of a responsibility it's like somebody's got to do this and i love to do this anyway so i guess it's gonna be me like uh, as i uh, with that muay thai lad the amount of injuries you must get because literally like the leg kicks I've, as i say i've fought thai and after one of the fights mm -hmm. I, I couldn't walk for like five days and yeah. that's just standard muay thai <laughs> yeah it's pretty rough it's pretty rough man um yeah, I think they're they're ex obviously we're extremely underpaid, but I there's part of me that there's 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 good to that too because it's people aren't drawn to the money aspect of it. You're only doing this because you love it, yeah. you know. And yeah. that was that was the thing when I started was you knew every single person in the gym, every single person you fought, every single person that was even involved in the sport. The only reason they do this is because they love it so much. That's why they do it. But as things do progress, then it starts getting a little bit murky in those waters. Some people are doing, especially now with like social media and everything, it's like people are just doing this so how, how they look on their Instagram or how people view them. And, you know, unfortunately, with the progression, that, that comes with it, you know, with, with money and, and with, with views and everything. That side, of, that side's come with it, but that, but that's with everything. You know, it's not to say those things aren't there on a small scale because they definitely are. It's just not as, as prev or it's not as uh, visible as it is once things get bigger. But I always feel like everything's the same, whether it's on a small scale or a big scale, because you're dealing with uh, human nature. You know, there's going to be a percentage of people that are doing this uh, that are die hard. They're going to do this no matter what. You're going to do. There's a percentage of people that are only doing this because of the way that it looks, the way that they're viewed, uh, the way their social media or the way their their family friends view them, and then. Um, and the, or and that's the other end of the spectrum, and then you're gonna have everybody in between that's maybe just doing it for fun and doing the other thing. So, I always feel like that percentage of people who really are doing this for for the the passion and the desire, and because they really love the sport so much, that percentage of people is the same whether it's uh, it's just starting out or whether it's you know like UFC level. You know, there's still a certain percentage of people who are just die hard fighters you know passionate and, and this is what they love to do and then there's fighters that are doing this just because you know they're getting paid good or you know they're, they're getting views on television but but who's who's going to still do this if you took all that away you know it's like those are the people that I, I like to be around and i like to train with and but you know as i said that that's going to be the same percentage of people on a small scale or bigger there just might be more of them is all but the percentage is always going to be the same yeah you're right there because everyone i know does Muay Thai, they love Muay Thai, you know what I mean? And it's it's a part of their soul, it's a part of their life, you yeah. know what I mean? And 
you see uh, there's with MMA it's different now as you say because it's more mainstream people just flutter about with it oh, I'll have a little go have a little go but in it's Muay Thai gym yeah. lad, everyone is just obsessed with Muay Thai it's brilliant to see 